Hi, I'm Steve Weierman, and today I'm going to talk about methods. I'm going to talk a little bit more about classes and objects. And I'm going to talk about the random class, which is a very useful class for generating pseudo-random numbers. I actually do not have any slides today. We're just going to jump right into NetBeans and do an example. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a little game. Uh, it's just going to be a simple number guessing game. And we're going to, just like with the payroll example, we're going to build on this example uh, over the next few uh, slides, I mean, over the next few lectures. So let me create a new Java application in NetBeans, and we'll call this Guess My Number. And again, I'm going to change the package to reflect my domain. I'll just click Finish, and that will generate the Guess My Number class. And here we are. And I'll get rid of the comments for now. Now, we've already actually written some methods. Uh, we've, whenever we've written a program in Java, we had to write a main method. And the main method is the method that executes when you run your program using the Java Virtual Machine. We're going to write another method. Uh, this method will be uh, to generate a number uh, that the user has to guess. So let's write a method. It's going to be public, which means it's visible outside of this class. Since this is only one class, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll get more into that with more complex examples. Uh, it's going to be static. That means this method is going to be associated with this class and not with any instantiation or with any object uh, of this class. Uh, since, again, this is only a single class uh, that we're writing, we're not actually going to instantiate this. This is just uh, going to be our program. We'll have this uh, method return an int. So first thing we have is scope. Second thing we have is a static modifier. Then we have int, which indicates the return value. And we'll tell this to uh, get, or yeah, get random number. And what we'll do is we'll just have this return a random number between 1 and 10. We'll keep it simple. So the way we do that is we need to create a new instance of the random class. Random is a class that's part of the Java Util library. And we're going to have to import that. So let me just type that in here. Import java.util. Whoops. Random. And it doesn't matter what we call this object. Uh, call it rnd equals new random. And then we want to return a random number between, let's say, 1 and 10. So what I'll do is I'll tell, or I'll get an, create a new int, um, call it return value. And that's going to equal rnd dot next int. And you're going to want to be careful uh, with the way you use this. If I want to return a value between 1 and 10, uh, you'll see that uh, this returns a pseudo-random uniformly distributed. 
int value between 0 inclusive and the specified value exclusive, which means if I type in next int 10, that's going to give me a random or pseudo random number between 0 and 9. And that's not what I want, but I can easily fix that. I'll just add 1 to it. Now I've got the return value. I can just return that. So now back in my main method, if I want to get a random number, I can call that get random number, and I can store the return value in a variable in my main method. So int number to guess equals get random number. Then what we'll do is we'll, um, we also need a scanner to get input from the user. You'll remember scanner, whoops, it was mentioned in a previous lecture. And let me add the import for that as well. If you're using the hints to add the imports, you got to be very careful to select the right one. We want a java.util.random and java.util.scanner. So we've got those. We've generated a random number. Let's have the user try to guess the random number. And we'll just print out a message telling the us user to guess my number. We'll set this up as a uh, while loop. Int guess equals in dot next int. And then if guess equals number two guess we'll print out you guessed it if it doesn't we'll print out Try again. And we're going to do this while guess does not equal number to guess. And you'll see a problem here. Uh, this guess I created inside of the while loop uh, isn't visible outside of the while loop. It's local only to those brackets. So I actually can't do it this way. I've got to declare that guess variable outside. I can do that here. And then just change that. So now that guess variable is going to be visible throughout the entire main method, not just inside the while loop. So now in the while loop test, guess is visible and it's going to do the comparison and everything should work. So if we hit run, we can see this program in action. I can type in 10, try again, nope, that's not it, that's not it. 7 was the number. And it's a silly example I know, but it gives you, uh, it shows you how to write a method, it shows you how to use that method, and we'll build on this uh, as, uh, in, in future lectures. So again, I hope you found this useful. For more information, check out my website, www.iteran.com. Uh, there will be uh, full courses uh, made available through Udemy and in New York through Skillshare.